we got just really creative with you last time, uh, Liam. You spent pretty much every minute after you left over here at the bar. <laughs> you were distracting the bartender for quite some time, but upon the death of this young maiden, uh, mysterious. Well, nobody at this moment knows other than, you know, Gurn and... Oh, know, wait. That lady's you know. dead. Oh. Right. So this lady was poisoned, and while that poison was taking effect, a... I believe the phrase is cloud of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of monkeys controlled magically and designed for thieving. Got to doing that over in this area. How uh, do they commonly leave? Uh, what's the ping thing? Do what now? Ping? Just hold yeah. it. Hold it down. Look, and, look over uh, here. I think I found a foundry Easter egg or something. Wait, or? Huh? Oh no, that's my little guy. So this bit, this map, uh, has roofs. That's why, like, you can't see over here because there's like a roof to this part. Yeah. Uh, so to pull it in, that's my cameraman. Oh, okay. Yeah, his icon is the is the foundry logo. So, I mean, it's very hard to tell typically, but because I saw it and I was like, wait a minute. Well, if you zoom like way in, you can see yeah. it. Or if you get the hover art. So yes, yeah. I've I neglected to think you haven't seen that before. He used to follow us around like all the time. And then I started, well, with a lot of maps, you can just put it wide open where you don't really need vision because there's not like walls and stuff per se, like, like caves and things, just the natural like turn of it, you know, prevents vision and things. So anyway, anyway, uh, but at that same moment that this person dropped dead and the bartender finally left you, uh, left the conversation over here and came over here to, you know, see what was going on. Uh, the monkeys were directed outside here and then left their sustainment and the tickets wafted to the ground. A bit of deception was attempted, but now an awkward situation is, uh, presented. At least for Saren, you guys are chilling. Um, meanwhile, where you can't see, uh, back here in the warehouse, a bit of combat took place as, uh, what's your name? Drez and Vimgard and the incredible construct of Gurn, which is now properly constructed, uh, fought some cat-like creatures that were not quite you know, your garden variety kitty cat, uh, upon freeing them from their bonds of the collars that they had, they all cast a dimension door like spell and dipped out. Uh, seemingly they've all been defeated. At least there are none that posed any threats to you. Uh, so I think it only best to resume with this situation at the door here where you were uh, contending with these two about the drop tickets that, that are on the ground, I believe you had tried to swipe them and make yourself invisible, but the, the time and the focus of these folks combined for a uh, not a success. So, any questions? Before we unpause and get started. Are we still in like an initiative or order here or something? Or just kind of... We're not. Would that make it easier for you guys to kind of adjudicate all of this silliness? Yeah, I don't think so. Since we're I, all split up. Yeah. Alright, so I'm just going to do y'all, obviously. Because you're not in direct contention. Uh, and 
your construct, it won't always be kind of, this mat with the walls is going to make it weird. Because I don't think you guys could see in there right now. And I can't make you see in there without making it be weird and just breaking the whole map. So just believe me, Drez and Vimcard can confirm he's standing there. And he's large. <laughs> Alright, so yes, everyone roll up initiative and we'll use that to guide our thing. Also, it'll keep the time from just rolling away crazy. Though I don't think it would... I do have one question for Brez. Do you want to be hidden in one of these containers? I know you were thinking about it last game. Yeah, I was thinking that might be the smart play, considering inside somebody just murdered a woman and also monkeys. Yep. Uh, maybe we should just find some place to hide out here. The monkeys, no. are, gone. The monkeys are gone, though. The yeah, are but gone. the memory of monkeys tends to linger. <laughs> Mad monkeys, if you will. <laughs> oh man, the memory of monkeys tends to linger. The quotable TTRPG experience. I mean, and am I wrong? I would say no. All right, so. We'll start then with you, Vimgard. If you want to attempt to squeeze into one of the containers, suitcases, baggage pieces here in front of you, it is a acrobatics check to see if you can, you know, contort yourself into it. Sorry, what did you say it was? Acrobatics check. Yep. Uh, you know what? Let's do it. Oh my gosh. So, you could, you could still do it, right? You can still get in one, uh, but you, you will not do, hide in it in the most unseen way. Does that make yeah. sense? Would this be a situation where he could use follow the experts um, to get a bonus from me? Or yeah, oh, right here? I had plus fifteen in it. I just rolled shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not a, that's not a bad yeah, modifier. In fact, it might be more than what you get from mine. Yeah. Well, uh, but but I would tell you. I mean, that's. You could try again. I mean, this is your turn, so that's just one attempt. Yes. You know what? I want to try one more time. And if I don't get it, Drez is... Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean... I wanted it. I mean, you got one more action. I'd say go ahead and try again before we move on to, you know, trying to have me assist you or something. No, uh, you know what? I'm just going to go with the party. I'll help You're you, fine. but... uh. Well, so I don't think... to be clear, do you want do you want to get into one with that role, or are you just going to say no nah, and do so and just wait on it? What if uh, what if on my turn I do instead of doing follow the expert, I just try an assistance role to see if I can help you out? Oh wait, on your next turn. did I did I goof that up? Why did it start at the bottom? It's not even your fucking turn. <laughs> All right, well, oh, sorry, that's my. I'll give that you was a my back. I was... Yeah, I'll give you a I free one. In oh, you were re-rolling your initiative. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, but all three rolls, I, I'm fine with that. Okay, I was... I was like, what the fuck? Am I stupid? Okay, then good, good, good. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you going to say? You're just going to stand there looking sad at the moment? Yeah, Dress pulled me out, and re I wasn't hiding well. I, I am a stealther, so... I'll uh, uh, I'll try to kind of Tetris you into one of those on my turn. All right, oh, no. Uh, so you leave one poor person's bag shredded and mutilated after trying to stuff yourself and your weaponry all down in it. Yeah. In, in a not so great way. 
Liam. How many hours is it till uh till the boat arrives and am I in my tailless form or not? It's gonna be a it's about four hours and I I believe you are in whatever form looks the most human. Is that's that would be my tailless form. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Why is it is it paused for you guys? Let's see. Here we go. Okay. Don't make me say that. Don't make me say tailless form. Oh yeah, heck off. Official rules. Mm. So I would have if it was an hour I would cast this guy self. You bring up a fair point that uh until now has not necessarily come up that is maybe worth mentioning uh, but you have spent many uh, minutes here at least with the bartender in conversation and uh, I will oh, insert here for you that one thing you wish to inform the rest of the party speaking of disguises is that it seems apparent to you that you are not unknown quantities and that um, you might do well to not present as you have throughout your whole adventure here. Does that apply to me? Because I'm rather new. Who knows? Or did my face instantly go up on the water poster? Well, therein lies the angle. You have discovered this information because, you know, you are a new companion to these folk. And so the bartender felt it, uh, you know, uh, beneficial or generous to tell you, hey, do you know who you're with kind of a thing. Gotcha. Well, yeah, I believe there was no real indication he was with us at this point, right? He was just talking to the today. bartender. No, I think he, like, came in with you guys, didn't he? I don't think this is where he met y'all, is it? Y'all came all... I think like we all, came, all came separately, didn't we? <clears throat> I think we came, like, we two or three the same at a time. place at the same time without being together. I think I've talked to y'all, but that's about it. Yeah, it at one at point, like yeah, it. there was... Y'all were, yeah. Hmm. That's the thing. Like my thing, I was thinking about it would only last for an hour. Uh... And keep in mind, I already have two tickets to this ship in my pocket, and two more on the ground in front of me. I'm about to have two tickets to paradise. Right. If everything goes right in my turn, I can get four of us on that boat. Yes, I will just walk over to the dead body and exclaim in shock, who would have done well, such a thing? Well, uh, okay. Uh, as you step on to the... Watch your step there. You, there's a railing right here. There's an elevator in the middle of the room here. Fine, I'll walk over here and exclaim, who would have done such a thing? And how did that person die? I just forget. Gurn's poison? Oh, it killed him. Shit. Uh, so you step over there and, you know, rejoin the bartender who has, you know, he left you to see what the commotion here was about. So you have kind of naturally followed him over. Uh, Drez, what will you do back here? Uh, first thing I want to do is roll to see if I can assist them guard. Okay. That'd be an aid. Calm down. I just learned about aid recently, that's all. It's like a reaction. Weird. Okay, and this is to help him on his check to get in, right? Yeah. All right. And I guess since I'm going to have to wait till after he's in to do that, that's about all I'm going to do. I, I was going to say, that's going to get a little weird. You can't then get in. The... Yeah, I can't get in a crate myself and then Man. pack him in. Yeah. I, should, I should have just delayed. In hindsight. In hindsight. 
All right, well, well, well. So, you stand in front of these folks, and where we last left it, you attempted to trick them by saying, you know, more monkeys, uh, but their focus on these uh, and just the time was not enough for you to, you know, grab the tickets and turn yourself invisible in the blink of an eye. Uh, they stand there ready to pick up their tickets, but looking at you, since you have, you know, exclaimed more monkeys, what will you do or say? Well, I'm going to try doing this. Do Fane's escape? Oh, fuck, it's two actions. Never mind, I'm not going to do that then. What so was it? it? it Fane's escape was, it makes me hidden to them for until the end of my turn. But if, it, if it's two actions, I don't have enough to do what I want, so never mind. Well, I grab will, them and then run, or grab and then invisible? I was going to grab and then use Fane's escape and then run, so that would be my three. Would, yeah, by the time my turn was over, I would be 35 feet away hiding behind the this thing over here, but I don't have enough actions for it, so I, I'll do something else. Um, Unless you'll allow it. Well, I was just thinking what would be in hidden and then you sneak. You have enough cover to sneak until the end of your turn. And I have swift sneak so I can sneak at my full speed. Yeah, I mean, you could, like, feign escape and then sneak away, picking up the, you know, scooping up the tickets. You let me do that to all kind of, like, pick up and, uh, the, and run at the same time? Well, sneak is definitely not run. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so broad it's daylight, so... Well, yeah, the cards are supposed to, like, make a... Uh, a Make me up an obstruction so they can't see me, so then I could you know, make it down to here. Crouching, yeah, crouching behind this fucking this thing, and I would just be hidden from them till the end of my turn. Right, but then they seek you, and you're standing right there <laughs> for all daylight. I'd be ducked down, but yeah, they would have to, yeah, you know, try to seek and find me. Jump in the water. I did think about that, but I don't have a swim skill, and I'd probably just sink to the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just don't. I don't think. I think you're right. I mean, you would need. It would need to be a one action thing to do yeah. there. Yeah, well, I'm but now it. I guess you know, it is essentially one action to just fling a deck of cards. <laughs> yeah, would Fane's would Fane escape include mutant running away? Probably not. I mean, it card settle. You keep saying hand. run away, but it's a sneak away. So, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Oh, with okay. swift sneak, it allows me to move my full speed. That's the only reason I say run away. Oh, okay. Well, it's fair. Yes, I don't think that will help you at the moment, other than, you know, arguably another creative way. I don't want to suggest things to you, but, I mean, these tickets in a pile of cards might cause at least some type of time. Ooh. Of course, that would be an ex. You probably need to explain why you did that. <laughs> All right, well, screw it. We'll go back to the my original. I will quickly pick up the two the two tickets from the ground, and then I'll use my plus one invisible like plus one invisible armor or whatever to cast invisibility. So I'll pick up the tickets, then go invisible. Okay, as you reach for them, you grab one. This gentleman right here with the nice purple hairdo. Uh, sees you doing that and reaches down and grabs his. So you have one. He's got the other. Do you still want to just go invisible? Yeah, I'll take what I can get. 
Do they mistakenly hold hands for a split second? No, nah, he was, you know, while he was picking up the one, he grabbed the other one, so they missed out. All right, so in a blink, you go invisible. They gasp, and they start to look around for some guards. And that would be my three actions. Pick them up and uh, cast. Uh, Gurn, you stand here having, well, like Mr. Burns, I guess, still, uh, having nonchalantly explained this death as of, I forget what you said, but you are nonplussed about it. <clears throat> what will you do well, at the moment? So I want to kind of snap to attention and, uh, <clears throat> like Fane coming to mm -hmm. the victim's aid. But first I want to swat away the shot glass on the table uh, to clear any evidence. And like, Perfect. as I'm rushing to the body kind of thing, right. kneeling down beside it, and okay. I'm going to fake CPR and pat down the pockets. And I'll motion for Liam kind of like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, help me with first aid on this poor person down here we can root around for a ticket all right uh so the the bartender here thinks that you know you that's exactly you're trained here and so you move in and you start feeling up this body weird uh and as you do so you notice this her ticket in her left front pocket uh, I'll start checking her, her pulse and other medical stuff. And... She's dead. Wow. Uh, can I, like, look like I'm searching for cause of death and steal the ticket? And I'll roll a thievery? Or would that be... Well, that's my ticket there, pal. Gurn slaps your hand away, you naughty boy. It's not your turn. <laughs> uh, Come on. Yes. So, uh, Gern, are you gonna grab this ticket? Yeah, I don't know. You need a thievery or. Okay. Yeah. You worked all game last game to get the ticket. <laughs> Is it private or blind? Uh, it's or... blind. Would be just for me. And then I yeah, get to okay, explain to you. Yeah, I know it's weird. I think private means would mean you both see it, but yeah. no, but nobody else sees it. Yeah. All right. So uh, as you as you are doing this, Liam moves into place here, kind of blocking the bartender. These two are just frantic. They're just, oh, what has happened? The monkeys, and then you know this one dropping dead, uh, and you very easily lift the ticket up out of her pocket. Uh, she's gone. There's nothing we can do. RP. All right, Vimgard, will you now attempt again to ha climb into a container? Yes. Okay, so it is a DC 26 acrobatics check, and you will receive a plus four circumstance bonus from Drez's uh, cool. expert assistance. Jeez oh my Christ. fucking god, I'm winning zero points out. One, four. Well, it looks like you're awesome. Roll yeah, it's, yeah. Okay, I just, also, I, I, I want to point out something no, to you I, here. I I... That's four threes that you've rolled tonight. Yep. And, a five. and you're also, how are you rolling your initiative over again with acrobatic? I where are you? Where are you clicking? On the hot, hot bars, core skills. Oh no, I'm going to attributes. Sorry, the one right beside it. Yeah, I rolled a four for you. <laughs> Slightly better. Oh, it's cursed as fuck. All right, purge, well, purge your dice. So you have right. a. Well, you have a choice. I mean, you can get in one with that roll. It's just not a, 
you know, success for being in there very, you know, neatly, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to try one more time, and if not, I'm going to... That's what it is. All right. Yeah, that would be my last. Oh. <laughs> this is just karma for, like, Sunday when we didn't fail a single check, and now we're not going to be able to fucking get one. Oh, now you say that. All right. Hey, better than a three. Better than a three. So, and then, I'm sorry, you said you were just going to go ahead and get in then, right? With this yep. one? All right. So, fair enough. You're in there. Uh, Liam? You have witnessed and observed and are aware of what Gurn was up to. And you have provided uh, uh, cover, as it were. Is the doctor in the house? Yes, this man didn't poison anybody. Very unfortunate. Heart attacks are a deadly thing. <laughs> Wait. All right, so you sit patiently, I guess, and wait then. Uh, Drez, what, are you, you going to go ahead and climb in one? Yeah, I'll do that now. Okay, so let me see in acrobatics. It's a DC 26. Jesus Christ. Got that bad juju on my dice now. There you go. So you climb in. Let's see, let me make a note of this. And no dress, yes. Perfecto. All right, so you guys are, you know, over here in suitcases then. Yes. Uh, Saren, you are now moving invisibly. Uh, these two are frantic and looking for the authorities. Uh, they don't seem to have any notice of you at the moment. What you gonna do? Alright, well. The three tickets in my pocket. And is this your is this one minute or ten minute invisibility? Uh, the ten minute. Okay. So I'll start by moving out of there. Five, ten... 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, that's one move. 20, 25, 30, 35 for two movements. And right, like I'm moving with stealthy with swift sneak, do I need to roll a stealth? Or is it just that I'm invisible, so that's, it's kind of moot. And you're invisible and outside, so no, there's, there's, Frantically looking for a marshal. All right. Now, while I'm invisible, I'm going to use my disguise kit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll I'll strip down and and or not strip down. I'll go reach into my bag and pull out my fine clothes. Uh huh. And I'll need my third action. So next turn, I'll put them on. All right. And, and disguise myself. All right. Gurn, having procured yourself a ticket, what will you do next? I'll uh, go over and sit with Liam and kind of in hushed tones uh Tell him we still need we need a ticket for you. We can either go down, or we or you could go play poker with these guys in the corner. I have a plan. I was I have a plan closer to time. Let's just say, you know that trick when I first met you. Yeah. Reuse of that. Okay. In different ways. All right. I'll go sit at the bar. Well, and if the other two are just sneaking onto the ship, then we have enough tickets for the rest of us if those two are trying to sneak on. Is that what they're up to? 
All right, uh, <clears throat> Vimgard <throat> struggles around in his suitcase. I will give you one more opportunity to reposition yourself in your suitcase uh, in uh, a more advantageous way. Yeah. If you could... I'm going to try it one more roll, time. If you cannot re-roll your initiative. Oh, I already have it ready, so it's not initiative. Let's see it. I believe in you. <laughs> oh, shit. Where's my soundboard? <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Excellent. So you you shuffle around in your suitcase and get better positioned. Uh, I didn't go in a dwarf suitcase. I went in more of a crate. There you go. Uh, you guys uh, re do a little quick math and realize uh, whether he will give them or sell them or let you, you make use of them. Your companion... Seems to have procured enough tickets for you all with the one Gurn has. So you you are aware of this. What will you do, Liam? Uh Don't wanna murder anybody else while you wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, I only have something that I'd like to do about one to three thirty minutes early. Hey, that person had a heart attack for no reason of us, for, of, for no reason of ours. They I don't got, know what you guys are talking a, about. They ordered the charged lemonade. That's what it was. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Drez, you really don't have a reason to reposition or do anything, but what do you desire? Uh, I desire to just chill out here and hopefully encounter no more problems. All right. You start to chill out there and encounter no more problems. Invisible Man, you have donned your different clothing. Um, I would say, you know, well, here's 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 how you could you can play it either way, really. When you encounter someone wearing these different clothes. You could either choose to like impersonate somebody else, right? Or you could try to just lie to them and be like, "No, nah, I'm not." You know, not saying you're specifically somebody else, right? But saying, "No, I'm just, I'm not who you think I am," which I think is both just going to be a like a deception roll. But the hair is split either way because it's past by. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, then I'll just say I use my disguise kit to cover up the scars on my face. Lose the hat. And, yeah, the hat and the dust are put on the fine clothes. That should be two actions. And, and then I'll just wait for the time being one more turn before I go un uninvisible and try to deceive my way back in there. Gotcha. What is the... What what is it that you have that turns you is your cloak or something, right? Yeah, my armor, yeah. And it's just like a spell, right? You sustain and concentrate on it or whatever. Uh, yeah, cast the level of uh, the lowest level invisibility spell, so ten minutes of invisibility as long as I don't do anything aggressive. Gotcha. So you could just yeah, gotcha. Fair enough. All right, so. Uh, crazy if I walked in there and all of a sudden became a, not invisible in the middle of a room with everybody well I guess the needle thread is you know you're not an innate caster right so you are wielding magical energies you know do you control them but the control is you can just do something aggressive which could be as simple as being like <laughs> you know? Yeah. But the, you know, 
need like I say the needle being thread that you you are not harnessing you are merely borrowing yes magical yeah. power it's a, a rune from my armor mm. <laughs> so Gern uh you are casually with peers sitting at the bar what do you desire to do uh I'll just I'll just keep waiting but I want and I don't know if I can but it's just for flavor anyway mm -hmm. I imagine the uh construct going over to the bags and in an attempt to try and tidy things up from the mess they made he's going to start throwing the bags around yeah so do you over here in the actors the skull do you see him he should be not in a yeah, I got a sheet open yeah yeah so you should be able to roll for that if you want to make him because it's essentially you you're saying okay i'm going to use my one action to control him and now I'm gonna. He's gonna do a a check to hide in the in the bag. Oh no, no, I, he's not hiding in a bag. Uh, he's a huge creature. I don't think he's gonna get in one. I, I I imagine he's tossing the bags around to put them at the bottom of the pile and like make make the pile look as it was before they started fucking with it. Kind of help them hide, basically. At the same time, he's going to throw their bags against the wall and knock them around a bit. <laughs> hey, that shouldn't happen. I already hurt. I forgot I have to heal up. I do believe I'm going to object to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was. you had me in the first half. <laughs> well, so, uh, yeah, what are you, you're just trying to attempt subterfuge by making the bags look undisturbed? No, it's just... It's just uh... Or you just... Just the bullshit. I got I've seen. But no, he. I mean, there's, there's no restriction. I mean, there are crates and things large enough that they're bringing, that your construct could, certainly attempt right. to hide in them if you wanted him. I mean, that's up to you. Well, it'd be. <clears throat> I, I mean, he, it's already. I, I wondered if he would need a ticket. Uh, as he is not, I would consider him my luggage. But if he can hide, I'll try it. Yeah, it's just, it's yeah. an acrobatics roll. Acrobatics to see if he's hiding successfully. So he uh, finds a large enough crate to cram down in, and I mean, you know, he doesn't need to breathe or anything anyway, so he's pretty comfortable. All parts and pieces fit. Uh, the, the strange thing. Uh, yeah. Now that I'm comparing the sheets, he has a better perception than I do. A better oh, AC. Yeah, he's and better way save better than you. Yeah, yeah. he's he's yeah, he's the hero right now. Yeah, he's awesome. <clears throat> so, uh, as we get to the top of this round, right? I think looks almost uh, a minute ish. No, well, no, that's ten rounds. So, uh, it seems that everyone is pretty well situated except for Saren. So, do you guys want to just turn the like regular in the encounter mo the initiative order and let the clock run as normal, and then yep. you can resolve. Or we can resolve what he's doing down here. Everybody good with that? Yep. All right, so uh, this ends, and Saren, we are all looking at you. So you're standing here. You are changed clothes, disguise, makeup, and and whatnot. Scars hidden, still invisible. Standing in front of the window, by the way, looks like. Uh, what we do here? To get back, what's your, what's your course of action? You can just describe it in a you know series of things if you'd like. Okay. Well, this window I'm standing next to is it, you know, open and easily easily easy easy to walk through. Not, what kind of question is that? We open and easily walk. It's not open, easy to walk through. Uh, I don't. You'd have to figure out if it opens, I guess. But 
at first glance, it does not seem to be one that they crack open for the breeze, no. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, well, then I will. There's no bathroom in that place. Shit. Okay, I will. Fuck. I don't want to. I don't want to get busted and fight these two going back in. Um... Okay. Create a distraction. Is that a thing anyone can do, or is that a feet thing? I think anybody can do that, right? I believe so. I think there's just like, uh, you know, there's feats for like embellishing it or whatnot, you know? All right. Well, then I'll use one movement action, still invisible. Five, ten, fifteen. As you come around the corner, you notice that they are indeed speaking to two shield marshals. Gotcha. There's one movement to there. And then could I you know, pick up a big rock off the ground and throw it down into the, into the barrels and thing over here to try to make it sound like someone's hiding over there? If you want to say, it probably would be really ineffective, though, the churn of the river and the din of, you know, there is people milling about here and just don't have, you know, a hundred actors on the table, right? Okay. Well, then, screw it. I don't want to risk it. So another movement action, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And then another movement action to... Sorry, my kid's right next to me crying. I'll lose my third movement to get up here. It's still invisible. And if you will just give me three minutes here. We'll give you three minutes. Okay, thanks. Sorry, guys. All right, so as he moves into this seat here, uh, the clock tick-tocks, tick-tocks, and eventually... His invisibility uh, wears off. Uh, this pack of ruffians over here notices, but doesn't seem to really care too much. Goes back to their drinking. Uh, the bartender uh, is obviously concerned with this dead body that is in his place. You guys notice at the door... Uh, a few more shield marshals showing up. Uh, they, of course, march directly over to the bartender and begin to discuss what has just occurred to him. Uh, another one appears and drags this dead body out of here. Nice. Uh, and this place... Uh, begins to fill up with more and more folks uh, awaiting the arrival of this boat. Uh, this reveler over here is consoling his mate. This one moves down here. The bartender eventually finishes up, goes back over to the bar. This marshal stays posted up by the door as you all sit and await the arrival of the boat uh y'all want to take just a quick break while he's dealing with that get a drink etc and so forth sure or we'll just wait a minute <laughs> i'm gonna go grab something to drink and i'll be right back
All right, sorry guys. Fuck. I assume everyone took a break? Uh, most everyone. Yeah. Think so, yeah. Okay. Alright. Well, I think I got that settled for a little while anyway. Oh, uh, Derek. Saturday, you said King's Head, right? 11 p.m.? Yeah, for Mo? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to head down there. I think Janice is going to watch the kids, so I'll head down there around then. Yeah. Whenever the Portugal the Man concert is over, that's when they're heading over there. Okay. So we'll be there before then, I guess, so that we can Yeah. Have, give them a little surprise. Yeah. The only thing is, uh, I know I'm going to the movies this weekend. I just don't know when, because uh, my brother-in-law is setting it all up, and... I guess everyone, all of his friends have kids in uh, hockey programs. Oh, they so that to, means it'll be, if they all have kids, it'll it'll be early. Yes, hopefully. If not, just any time you want to show up after, that's fine too, right? Yeah. Yeah. His real 40th birthday present was going to fucking F1 in Formula, Montreal, yeah. so... Doesn't look like a whole lot of people can show up randomly on that Saturday, so no, probably only yeah. be six or eight of us there. <clears throat> I just haven't been out in public with his wife's drinking since fucking university. I've never met her. Yeah, I don't think I've ever met her. She's she's a very nice lady that Mo uses as an excuse to not have to come out to things. <laughs> I challenge that first part. Well, you don't think she's nice? <laughs> she can be. Yeah. I mean, if, if you were her husband, you might be... You'll have, have a few different fucking ways to look at that, but... Every time I've met her, she's been nice as hell. She just suffers from really bad OCD, as far as I can tell from the way her house looks. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Hey. Yo. Alrighty. <laughs> so, uh, you are all, let's see, there we go. Uh, you are all situated here. Uh, nothing seems to be too amiss, uh, at the moment, anyhow. I'm, I'm not invisible anymore, I think, or I take it. No, you ran out, yeah. Uh, you casually slipped into a seat over here at this table with Liam. Uh, the bartender's, you know, in place here, busying himself, trying to calm down from all that craziness. There is a shield marshal posted at the door, and the folks outside have not, uh, you know, walked back in or anything yet. But other well, than like that... Casually, well, casually yeah. slip a ticket over to Liam. Okay. I'll take it. And then give Ner Gurren a head nod to come over and grab his. I got mine. Oh, yeah, you already have one. So I have an extra one. They're both hidden in luggage, so we shouldn't even need it. You need one. I have three total. So I, yeah, I have two. Liam has one, you have one, and the other two don't have any, so... All right, so uh, these folks, after a few minutes, do walk back in and join their friends, who are obviously 
distraught and inconsolable. They are in conversation about whether they will even continue their journey. Again, this place is, you know, filled with other patrons as well, rich folks and such, milling about, feeling more and more as time goes on here in the mid-morning. Uh, these two guys seem to post up at the door, you notice, through the window. Uh, other than that, it seems to have uh, calmed down a bit. And you have an opportunity, I guess, to do anything before the ship arrives. You have a few hours, so anything you want to plan and explain now is your kind of final opportunity. So, at around 30 minutes till boat arrival, I kind of want to transform into looking like a dock hand or something. Be able to sleep, uh, slip on the ship, uh... Hitman style, like, I'm one of the people working here. Basically, okay. the uh, board will get you into anything tactic. Didn't I just give you a ticket? That's my backup. <laughs> Fair enough. So you want I to look- use your abilities to completely look like a ship worker? <sighs> Not a ship worker per se. Like, would it be? I mean, Point no. That's that's, that's, look like... that's the that's fine. It's just it's the difference of what I was saying earlier with him. It's the difference between impersonating someone and just trying to like lie and be like. Well, nah. with the shifting faces thing. It is. I could theoretically be looking exactly like somebody because right. it's. I cast illusory disguise at. The third level, and it probably tells you. To, does it tell you to do impersonate instead of deception? Um, how it's so setting up the disguise for the impersonate use of deception. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So I just suppose so. Well, and so listen, I'm not trying to tell you or or like, uh, what am I thinking of? Foreshadow or something? But just when I hear that, this is what I hear. If you're impersonating someone, okay, that means that person exists, perhaps. And we've all seen, or maybe we've seen and you have yet to see, but maybe you will see, the trope in like a sitcom where you're pretending to be somebody and then they walk up behind you. (laughs) Right? It says I can appear as... I can disguise myself... And my clothing, and I could do a specific individual, but I think it would also let me basically look like I. So I'm not trying to look like someone specific. Oh, it's not like I'm trying to look like jo- dock worker Jim. It's just I'm trying to look like a dock worker. That's if fair. That makes sense. At which yeah. point. I would, you know, it's not like you just walk into a job and they say, oh, yeah, you work here. You got on the T-shirt. But you could try it. I'm basically trying to do the, I have a clipboard in my hands and I look like I know what I'm doing. Don't mess with me trick. Yes. Fair. Yeah, the old, if you're carrying a ladder, do you, do you, they, people let you in everywhere? I want to say hard it's hard hat. No one will give you a second look. Yeah, it's hard hat or a clipboard or pizza box. Well, there's a there's a whole YouTube or a Instagram channel that two guys have where they just carry a ladder into a bunch <laughs> of places and they have never been stopped once. They have vests and a ladder and they just keep, everyone lets them go by. Is this on? Is this in Canada? Well, I assume Instagram. Well, it, it's Instagram, so most of that is all just American shit that we. Okay. On off as our own. Fair enough. I just like, I don't know, back me up on this, Hideki. I feel like if you're carrying a ladder somewhere in Alabama, somebody real quick could be like, What you doing that for? <laughs> you I don't think that? a ladder would necessarily work 
you got down here? But I think every time I've seen someone carrying a ladder, I've been like, "What you doing with that?" <laughs> that's interesting. I'm gonna that, look that up. That's why I said it's like clipboard or pizza box or hard hat. There's some options. You can look like you know what you're doing. You're just worried that it's disguised as a gun somehow. No, yeah, right. Well, it's Alabama. Ever. How many like guns that. you got in that ladder? Yeah. What's that thing hold? <laughs> Jeez. Uh, true though. All right. Well, so with no other hearts or minds uh, troubled, uh, do you all just pass the time? Stuck in your suitcases and playing cards. Do I hear a yay to yeah. that? Yes. All right. So. Do 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 do. Time passes. You hear a large. Ch -ch -ch. All right. The boat pulls in here. And in the middle of this room, uh, I can make that thing. I don't think there's a thing to make this little thing work. But the elevator here goes down and up on top of it. Let's see. Or when it comes back up, I should say. Uh, you see... A whole bunch of shield marshals. And everyone in the whole room almost instinctively uh, begins to uh, line up. Uh, well. these, these folks over here despondently go over to the bar. They seem to have decided they are not going to take their journey. And they commiserate with the barkeep. Uh, these folks get in the head of the line here. Oh, I well, see these guys all do some bar. Yes, go ahead. I am a dock hand, so I'll go and get Gern. Not Gern. Uh, my party members. So you're playing. You don't know our names, do you? You're playing. Look, Baron and Vemgard. Mm, not Saren. Drez. Sorry, Saren. <laughs> okay, well, so... Your plan is to go through this door in front of this dude who definitely knows you're not a dock worker. That's your plan right there's now. somebody else who looks like a dock worker. You should just get in line with your ticket. <laughs> yeah, fine. <laughs> yeah. Hope... Hitman esque plan and yeah. It would have been a great plan if if you know you didn't already have the tickets and everybody hadn't drawn an incredible amount of attention to themselves inside. Alright, so these fellows, shield marshals, begin to walk around here, uh, inspecting everyone. Looking at your tickets to make sure they are genuine. Uh, they're doing so at gunpoint, which is a little bit frightful for the ordinary folks around here, but not for you all, and certainly not for this rough crowd, but for the unseen uh, crowd that piles through. They are a little bit, you know, ugh, uh, ruffians. So they make it through, and eventually it comes to you all. Uh, you, my friend, are you still donning your disguise, your illusory disguise, or did you shed it at some point here? Um. Are you still trying to look like a dock worker even to them? No. I'll just look like my normal self. I don't think I've, I'm well known enough. To be suspicious, Hideki would have been, but not me. Alright, so yes, they pass over you quite mundanely. Um, same with you, Gurn. They check your ticket. It looks legit. They don't suspect a thing. 
Uh, they get to you, Mr. Saren. And you must attempt a check here. DC 24 to continue fooling them. Do you want that public or blind? This could be public, but I just told you the DC. Okay. It's less I than think, a 50-50 th shot. I think that's how... Uh, uh, well, I think that's how some Pathfinder folks do it. So if I, if you if you GM and then you ask for a check, but don't say the DC, then that's you roll it and I you hide it. Oh. But if you want them to just be open, you say okay, it's a DC, blah blah blah, whatever. And then with since I use my disguise kit, be our secret language. Do I get a any bonus from using the disguise kit? I believe the disguise kit's just what lets you disguise yourself. Okay, yeah. I think you got to get the higher level one. Yeah. Which, yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's what it looks like. Okay, well, I'll try my check. And if I fail it, it will be hero pointed. Hero point. Yeah, that's your fault. You jinxed it. Derek, are you using the clothing high fashion? Yeah. Uh, it says you gain a plus one item bonus check to make an impression on nobility or other that's high to, class that's to, that's to make an impression, not to deceive. Oh, sorry. I didn't read the whole thing. I'll shut up. Classic mistake. <laughs> yep. Always read the last line. All right, well, here's a bit 20. I don't think you can anyways here's Wonderwall that sort of thing. And did we get a new hero point at the top of the hour? Indeed. I will all spend a second one too. You said it was 24, right? I did. Okay. Well, 13 or better. Come on, new bike. Fuck. You hit on a 16. Well, that's all the hero points I got. Well, well, well. They surround you and draw guns on you. Well, as I, I like to look at all of them and be like, because I, I dressed up in high fashion, I'm supposed to look like, you know, a noble or something. How dare you? Do you know who I am? I'll see it. I'd like to attempt a society check. We'll see it. Why would that be society? Uh, <laughs> I don't know how, how high society folk get, get all of their, their shit in a knot. Who do you tell them you are? I tell them that I am the, the Duke of... Glastonbury. <laughs> <laughs> what a subject. <laughs> uh, they seem utterly confused as your appearance does not match what they were told to look for. Uh, even though they briefly thought that, you know, they saw one of your telltale scars through your makeup. Uh, your uh, posturing here, though, along with your clothing, has convinced them that they are making some type of mistake. Of course, the clientele here in this place being very rich and very influential, they are, you know, quite sure that, you know, a mistake like this is possible. So they back off. And you all go ahead and board <laughs> successfully. Thank, thank God. Thank you. Yeah, if there was ever a time. Uh, so I'm gonna do. I, th I don't want to delete. I don't want to remove you guys because I don't think you could see. But you all, these folks included, the ruffians and such, uh, all go down this elevator. 
and you board the boat. So we'll switch over to that map shortly. However, you folks in the luggage uh, are also greeted by a bunch of shield marshals as they come in here to inspect the luggage before it is lowered down on the crane. Where'd that other guy go? Is that it's a crap. <laughs> Maybe. All right, so I need you fellows. Let me look back here. I need you fellows to roll a DC 24 stealth check. You both get a plus two circumstance bonus. And that is out in the open since I just told you the DC. All right, so Drez, you remain perfectly still and are completely undetected. Uh, Gurn, can you roll for your your thing? You what did, by the way, what did you want to name it? Did you want to name it something? Isn't it based off a ducky? I think yes, we did say something like that. Isn't it reanimated to Decky? Hecky lives on. Yeah, but he's all bulked up and big. Uh, That's Hadouki. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. I'm uh, calling him Reese because he's made of pieces. Nice. <laughs> uh, I did say 24, but you also had more bonus than that. So you all successfully hold your breath, squeeze it in, and get lowered onto the ship. Hmm. Let me show you all where you ended up. And then we will talk experience. Uh, so, let's see here. This is going to be fun. Alright, so... Actors? If that didn't work somehow, I was going to take a hostage to get out of the room. It could have got interesting. It's... There. Uh, Leah. Yes. Oh, I mean, I was just grabbing you and pulling you out of there and saying your name when I did it. Uh, so you all that boarded with tickets will be on the passenger deck here. <clears throat> and then you all that were lowered in with the luggage. Find yourselves. Let's see. Oh, do, 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 do. <coughs> I think it's on a different day. Hold on, let's see. Let's see. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Give me a second here. Let me get this set up. So, for the most of you, we're gonna go to this scene. I haven't figured out a way to like record two scenes here. So we're gonna go here. So give me a moment. Don't go here. Don't go running around just yet. Uh you see let me get this. Vimgarn and nice Reese. All right, so let me do this. So, uh, we haven't done this in a while. But I, uh, you find yourselves on different parts of the ship. 
those of you and and let me know if you can't see yourself or if I've made a grave error but Liam and Saren and Gern find yourselves on the passenger deck of the ship here uh, you have been shown to your rooms which are conveniently these ones right in front of you uh, we'll give you three rooms stately as they are all these beds uh, however your companions who were hid and I guess Gern you just kind of uh, I don't know, you don't really have like a telepathic link with your homeboy, but... He... Yeah, he can act once or do one action on his own. Well, you're right, I mean, yeah. But, but I I'm, don't... you don't like, you know, see through his eyes and shit, you know. <laughs> like you're that, right, right. Like that druid connection or something. But anyway, you you obviously, he's with, you know, Driz and Vimgar. No, I couldn't uh, select his token last time uh, and I don't know how I could switch scenes well yeah there's not gonna be a like easy way for me to do that I could pull you to that scene uh, if you want to move him which we'll figure out here in a moment uh. we'll just, yeah just have him follow those other two I guess unless he gets in the way right well, that's what I say. I think I can pull you back and forth, but we'll kind of play that as we need to do it by ear. All right, so uh, you have made your way now onto this boat, and of course, you know he has to go right as uh, you land. So that, that makes it a little difficult, perhaps, but. You have come here to find these bombs, these pyronite bombs, that you have one key for. You've been told there are three keys. Uh, aboard this boat is just all kinds of rich, important, highfalutin folks. Uh, there's also mixed in just all the corrupt shield marshals and... You know, it is it is unlike anything you're really accustomed to. Uh, however, as you've done throughout this whole adventure, you're doing your best to kind of fit in and blend in. Um, at the moment, you you have no clue where to even begin. Uh, you know, you could speak to crew members, you could mingle amongst the passengers on the ship. Uh, you could try to just go snooping around, you know, Scooby-Doo style on your own. Uh, you could try to, you know, spy on the guards. Any number of activities that, you know, would lead you to a clue or somehow give you some kind of hint as to where these bombs could be located. Uh, once you find them, you have the task of disarming them, dislodging them, somehow getting rid of them uh, you know what circumstances that entails uh, that's to be seen of course uh, you all for getting onto the boat before I, we get too far away and I, we lose it you all receive 60 experience points let's see if we missed any for anything else uh, yes, for also for acquiring tickets and or as you hit in the luggage, you will receive another 60. So, before we get further, you all have, would have received 120 XP. Does that put you at 120 into 1,000? Should put us at 195. 195. I'm going to do Hideki. Uh, Liam's. Alrighty. Uh, so, yes, you do find yourselves, like I say, in the passenger's berth, shown to a nice, comfortable room. Uh, 
in a very different set of circumstances. Meanwhile, in the cargo hold, uh, Drez and Vimgard and Reese, you all find yourselves, uh, but, well, like I just said, in the cargo hold amongst sundries, uh, luggages, cargoes of various sorts. Uh, you have managed to dislodge yourself from your hiding place, and you're just you're just in here. Uh, I'm going to treat wounds on us. Okay. Oh, I have a hero point. I'll just uh, no, never mind. Do it again. You bleed all over the grain and reveal your. No. All right, that'll be for Dreads and I. And I'll do that one more time. That should be okay. I shouldn't be dazed anymore, should I? I don't yeah, know it's, from it's more fun time. that way. Alright. Uh, I would say enough time has passed. Your eyes have returned to normal. Alright. Uh, so, you all in the passenger berth, what will you do here? Do you go searching for your companions, or... Do you confer with one another? Uh, Liam crawls into his full-size bed here and shuts the door and goes to sleep. <laughs> it's bedtime. School tomorrow. All right, we look. He's got his east parts in the morning. Looking for those bombs, or should we go find those guys in the luggage? You coming to knock on my door? Yeah, I'm whispering you on the other side of it. Oh. And it is it is fair to assume that you would know, or at least you would assume, your character set is, that, you know, having hidden in luggage, your companions would be somewhere where the luggage is soon. Well, I just say to Gurn, I was like, I've, I've got an idea. I'm, I'm all nobled out, and I think I'm a noble, so I'm going to noble myself and tell them that I've uh, misplaced something in my luggage, and I need to be escorted down to my luggage to get it out of my bag. Deal. Give me... Something uh, of yours to you, you notice in your room uh, some, like, you know, brochures and things about the boat. Would you, you care to read them? Definitely. I'll read the little itinerary and fire escape route. Yeah, precisely. So you find these little pamphlets and they tell you all about the gear smoke. Uh, and, you know, boasting of the amenities and the uh, opulence of this vessel. Uh, it's been in service for some time. You all have heard of it, but it's, again, this is not quite the way that you travel, at least in your everyday life. Um, this is for the wealthiest of the wealthy, aristocrats, business entrepreneurs, uh, foreign dignitaries, you know, all of whom are looking for a river excursion away from the heat and the smog in the city. Uh, it tells you, or you are able to learn from this, that the boat here has four levels, each of which are about, you know, 10 feet high, uh, except for the bottom level where the cargo hold is, and that is a 15 foot high berth. Uh, the upper decks are where the most luxurious accommodations are. The dance floors, the gambling tables. Um, 
you all uh, kind of scan through this information for the most pertinent bits, and okay. you're able to glean from some of the technical information that there is, in fact, a complex series of ventilation ducts uh, throughout the lower three levels of this uh, ship. Um, it's obviously some type of advanced, you know, uh, heating, cooling, engine feature of the ship, which they're boasting about, but you're able to kind of read the technical stuff and figure out, oh, these would be viable as a transport mechanism of sorts if needed. Uh, other than that, you don't glean anything, uh, helpful beyond, uh, the typical milieu of it you know has a schedule for you know when the bars are open and the the de the restaurants that are on deck and all that kind of stuff okay well with that info i'd like to get like one of a coat or something and hand it to gurn and uh Talking about just pretending to be like my servant or my yeah, parent. I'll uh, drape it across my forearm, all dainty like, and uh, follow at your heels. Okay. Well, then we'll walk casually down the, the around the deck until I can find like a concierge. Uh, well, as you walk into this place, it absolutely stinks. Uh, you can see that there are folks, a few of them, brave enough to sit around uh, smoking cigars, but it's not quite as many as, you know, the seats would allow. It seems that there's uh, something connected to this place creating quite the stench you all stand there for a moment really taking it in as your companions in the cargo hold are doing what let's let give them a chance to move out of their initial positions or you guys do let's move them around stealthily uh, i will say Drez, you're more experienced in this, so I will follow you. Uh, I think, let me let me do this. So I think if I do this, you guys can see. Can y'all see? Or no? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see. Okay, cool. Alright, so, sorry. Go ahead. What were you saying? Oh, I was going to follow Trez on this one. Fair. I'm going to move to the north door. I'm going to put my ear to it and listen. Man, I wish I had a fart noise. <laughs> if anything, I'm trying to uh, bring Re Reese with me. Just because we know that he's part of Gurren's creation. Uh, he oh, looks at you and this brainless clockwork reanimated creature uh, just shakes its head and you realize that it will not follow a creature it doesn't think is smarter than it is. <laughs> <laughs> I have a pretty good intelligence. Alright, so... It reluctantly follows you. Uh, as you put your ear to the door... You hear very faint voices. You can't make out what they're saying, but... You hear the din of... Conversation. From some distance away. All right, I'm going to go down to the south door and do the same thing. Uh, you put your ear to the door and you listen intently and hear... Uh, 
nothing. All right, I'm going to recommend we start here with this south door. Okay. I push it open slowly and quietly. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, is it locked? Uh, it is not locked and comes right open. Move through. You notice signs about these uh, walls here. The one nearest to you it seems to indicate that these are crew quarters. Alright, I'm going to go right here. And you said there are other signs, yeah? Yep. Alright, I would like to look for those other signs. Okay, I mean, you clearly see they're by the doors. Seems like every door has a little sign, and it just has the name and the, like, position of the crew that there's a sign to this cabin. Alright. Just gonna keep moving quietly around to here. Alright, you have come upon an obvious stairwell. The stairs here go up. Uh, what do you think? You want to head up the stairs? Yep, I'll join you. And I can actually say this, I will be walking stealthily as well. Alright. This construct contorts itself through time and space. To also follow you up the stairs in a hulking, joking, reanimating fashion. <laughs> well, obviously, you guys need to just get a fucking ladder. You buying all these magic items? Just need a ladder, bro. Oh. Alright, so. This is gonna make it a lot easier for the moment. As you gentlemen linger in the cigar lounge, uh, boop -a -boop. you fellows pop up into boop a boop. Oh man, he's us all on top of you guys. All right, so let me pull you all here once more. All right, did I work? That worked. I have y'all. Yep. All right, so you guys mysteriously have vision into the room next to you because your fat ass construct stuck his fat ass into that next room. Uh, but you have popped up into a stairwell. You have found the door in front of you locked here as your last momentary thing. And look, I'm going to hide the construct for just a second. He's there, though. Um... Would you like to attempt to unlock this door? You have, right, yeah. right. you have found that it is an average lock, which will require you to make four successful those. Huh. <laughs> Did you pop a check up on the screen? Because I don't see it. You don't see it? Nope. Camera, I do. <laughs> cameraman sees it. Hang on, let's let me see. refresh. Yeah, let me. I can do it again. Pop a check. Pop, pop, pop. You see it now? 
Give me a second. I'm loading back in. Oh, my bad. Do that. All right, I see it now. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I am here appointing that because I am not wasting the fucking lockpick. Jesus Christ, hang on a second. I'm not doing anything else until I purge these fucking dice. that one all righty the lock begins to give way there we go two chambers give way one that remains and the lock comes open easily and the door opens to reveal a hallway out in front of you. Meanwhile, you all in the cigar lounge through the stench and the smoke uh, do still notice or hear a door open back in the hallway behind you. It's your boys. I have my axe ready. Anything that moves opens that door. Green uh, monster figure uh, around the corner. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you quite simply have seem seemingly easily reunited here, having come up from the lower deck to this deck. Uh, you can assume since you were in the cargo hold, you were on the lowest hold, the lowest deck, as these guys just read out of the pamphlet. Uh, and I'm sure they will inform you of shortly. Uh, so, you can assume then that you're, the passenger deck here is, you know, second up from the bottom. Uh, how you will proceed is up to you. I'd like to do a quick perception check to see if I can figure out where the smell is coming from or what it is. Sure. He who smelt it, dealt it. Sorry, guys, I really need a shower. <laughs> no, you uh, you sniff around, which is only oddly, the, uh, or is oddly kind of tolerated. People don't think too much of it. Um. However, you, you can't quite, you know, you're not a bloodhound. You can't quite pin it down, but it seems strongest uh, right around the vents. It, it's something and, other than cigar smoke? Oh, yeah. It smells like, like something rotten. I assume this room is full of people. What, what are you having him do? Well, it's not full of people. It's definitely you can tell that like it's definitely built for way more people than are in here. This this stench is, you know, likely causing the patronage to slip a little bit. Yeah. But what were you looking for with the contra? Oh, uh, oh, that was just for me. If. Uh... If I can pinpoint what the smell might be, or are these patrons that are in here behaving normally? Do they seem to be 
uh, drug I mean, up they're, or, yeah, they're sitting here smoking cigars, just having conversations. And then every once in a while, you know, when they catch a whiff of this, they're like, oh, yeah, they kind of hack it up a little bit. Bleh, bleh, you know? right, but they don't have the 100 yard stare. No, they're not like zone. I mean, this is these are all pretty posh. People. Everything seems to be a, you know normal so far. Um, but yeah, I mean, you you as well. You can't. I mean, it's not constant, but it seems strongest near the vent. So it doesn't say you know you you both are pretty well satisfied that the source of it is not like directly in this room. Yeah, and the and the and the cigar down. smoke helps, right? I'd like to ask someone sitting in here if they know what that smell is. Excuse me, good good man. Do you know what that smell is? It's awful. And they all comment to you that they regret that they are unaware of the source of it, but uh, one of them lights up a, another incense in one of these braziers around the room and you you notice that there are several of them really churning and burning here with incense they you know they're doing their best here to try to cover it up can i say to the guy that i was just talking to i'll uh i'll give you a copper piece for one of those cigars so i don't have to smell this well there's just there's like cigars all around this place they're everywhere you can just pick one up oh, it's, it's posh Start, yeah. start on a cigar. It explodes now. <laughs> it's an acne cigar. <clears throat> All right, so you puff away. Uh, would you guys care to come out of the stairwell? Yep. I will start coming out. Uh, your construct yells, "Pa ba!" and runs down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I grabbed one of the cigars. Is he supposed to, like, have any... I didn't look at this, but... Is he supposed to have any kind of, like... Scares people? Terrifying? Appearance? Thing? He's only trained in intimidation. He's just... Well, I just mean, like, in general, if he's out in public, do you have to, like... Uh, probably off-putting, yeah. I mean, it's not not for here. I guess if you were in, like, Absalom or whatever, it'd be weird. But around here, right? It's like necks and shit. Would it be easier to make him a medium creature for this? Is that something we can change as well? I mean, he's got to be his real self. No, but I think, yeah, you could, because it's just that, it's that activity, right, that's associated. I don't, I, I think you can go back and forth, You but if you spend that, like, reconstruct or whatever activity, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But, I mean, uh, if you want to take him back in your room and reconstruct him into a medium creature, we can uh, do that. Chop some pieces off. Well, I'll just change the token for the time being. Let's see here. And as Vimgard walks up to a yeah, I go and shake his hand and palm him the, the spare ticket that I've got just in case someone checks. I nod and uh oh. There you go. He's a medium size now. His token got small, but he's squares. You, you see it. Okay, yeah, sorry. What were you saying? You come into the cigar lounge and... I just said I palm uh, the extra ticket that I've got and go to shake Vimgard's mm -hmm. hand and hand him the, the ticket just in case. Forever asked for it again. Okay. Let me go... Good to see you guys. We were just coming to look for you. Ah. Uh, we were coming up here because we smelt the smoke and the awful smell. Uh, 
Oh, uh, well, other than that, the only thing you really notice in this room is a very large harp chained to the floor over here in the corner. Uh, nothing else really seems to be too impressive in this room. Other than, of course, you know, the passengers that are milling about. Reluctantly puffing on their cigars. Yeah, Nicotine but... slaves. <laughs> I quit. You can too. Yeah, it's a heart. Because yeah. none of you are barred, so I'm not changing it to something else. <laughs> Kind of explore around and see there's just three hallways all of rooms. As far as I can tell. Say again. Three hallways, it looks like they're just rooms all around. Yes, they definitely look, uh, well, these hallways appear to be the rooms. And then at the end of the hallways, it seems to be, you know, two kind of fancy looking doorways. And you can assume that there's some kind of communal deck type place building or whatever there, right? Is this more like a cruise ship or a paddle wheel casino kind of deal? This is like a, think river boat. You, you familiar with river boats? <laughs> you Mississippi river boat type gambling? I've seen Ozark. Huh? I've seen Ozark. There you go, okay. Didn't you guys have one in Winnipeg at one time? Or some uh, sort of can I can I give you guys an anecdote? This is just a southern I I read this not too long ago about riverboats. So, you know, obviously in North America, I'm sure it was huge in Canada, you know, y'all obviously got a lot of waterways. Well, obviously with the Mississippi River, you know, huge, you know, in our history, well, so in like northern areas because not just the mississippi you know there were like river boats on other northern waterways that just kind of connected to the you know tributaries and things of this nature anyway in northern areas if you look up like the statistics we have on river boats in the north it was like pretty safe like almost the safest way to travel when it was you know the height of of like long distance type travel yes but when you got to the south it was dangerous as hell because in the south these like southern morons would like stuff the boilers and like do crazy shit to the engine and race them and <laughs> and blow the shit up that is awesome of course you guys did yeah i'm not even kidding google the shit it's crazy and there's like paintings of famous like boiler like ships blowing up and you know in the painting it'll have one like literally blowing up killing like everybody on board or whatever or throwing half of them in the river while the ship that is winning the race is in the background with people like waving at them or whatever what were they using for fuel well, there was just, uh, like, coal burners, but if you, like, you know, you throw shit in there you're not supposed to, and you, like, really it's juice, you know. Awesome. I mean, if you if you stoke a boiler too you, hot, yeah, right. it does blow up. Right, and they would, and then they would, like, block ports, right, so that it was run, you know. More I mean, pressure. Over, overclocking, bro, come on, we're PC folks, you know. <laughs> they threw a little pyranite in it. Pyranite, there you go. You go. I may have also just given you some type of way to sabotage this vehicle. But. Well, yeah, I was I was just about to suggest to everybody that we should probably see if we can kill the engines. Well, the when I read that, it reminded me of, and I don't know if this phenomenon exists up there with your like local police or Mounties and such, but... Like, there was a phenomenon that started, I don't know, what, two decades ago of, like, police and sheriffs getting, like, high-performance, like, you know, Dodge Chargers, Ford Mustangs, you know. And where I lived locally, when that first happened, the local sheriff got, like, six of them, 
and within four months, more than half of them were just totally wrecked. Because these guys were just, you know, getting out there being dudes with powerful cars <laughs> and little uh, uh, limits. Yeah, they tried that years ago, probably ten years ago, if there was like Camaro police cars and shit, but that, something happened and that went away. Yeah. I mean, they still, like, do it here. Like, all of the cop cars are, like, Dodge Chargers and shit. Tahoes, nice trucks and stuff. Anywho, that was a rabbit hole. Uh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> I like to, we all sit down and, like, brainstorm on what is our plan on this boat. We, we can try to stop the boat or we can try to find a way to search the boat to find these things. Well, you know, if we kill the engines, we give ourselves more time to search. I agree with that. That's well, and good. to, I guess, to give you some context here, um, let's see, I'm sure they give us some, do they not? Uh, so, the length of this journey is, I mean, it's not terribly short, um, but it's also, you know, not... You don't have, like, a week's time here. Uh, so it is currently uh, just just after mid-afternoon, right? Almost evening here, approaching evening. So this is like an overnight excursion, I would say. So this boat is moving at this moment just like terribly. It's almost just cruising. It's just like terribly slow moving, kind of taking in all the scenery. So uh, you definitely have time to plan, even probably to rest once. And then tomorrow, like, you know, mid-morning is when it's really set to get into, in, into Alcazar and then approach the falls there. So you right. essentially I'm you're in much. you're in no rush at the moment. That's what I'm trying to get at. Well, I, I, I say that we should probably just scout around and get our get a lay of the land, and then after we know where everything is, we'll come, we'll, you know, come up with a plan after that. Yeah. Be back here in two hours. <clears throat> Sounds like a plan. Break up into groups of two. Me and Gern and you two, I guess. Each take a deck right. and see if we can figure out just you know, get a better idea of what we're dealing with. Okay. Guys, you on. Which which way are you guys going first? Oh, well, we'll go up, I guess. Well, we pretty much have to go up because we just came from the very lowest. Yeah, well, well, I'll, I'll, I can probably get into the the highest of the the rich area. I'm just going to find someone and complain about my suite not fitting, fitting my station. There was more to see down there, though? There may have been. I mean, we came out of the cargo hold, and there was basically a hall with uh, crew quarters on it. But I would imagine that's probably also a little bit of a tricky place to scout because it's probably off limits to just... You know, regular might guess. Be, might be easy at this point just to try to talk to some crew members and see if, if like, you can get, glean any information off of them. Yes, yeah, so where are your bones located? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's a beautiful ship. What, I've only had to see such a small part of it. What's, you know, this area? Where's it the bomb? Is, uh... Are there any areas that we're not allowed to go into? I'm in an important Italian embassy. <laughs> we do have another option, too, should we decide that things are getting a little bit desperate. Uh, I do still have a stick of pyronite on me. We could go below the water line, slap it against the hole, light it, and then run and jump off the ship. Just blow up the ship. I would imagine would once die. it goes up with the other pyronite bombs on here, it would probably destroy most of the ship and kill everyone on it. Fuck, are we missing? Are we ever missing? Uh, Eat Neji the here? rich. Neji still got that fucking big giant bomb from the first, the first book. 
Yeah. I I just you know if we decide to um, use the pyronite to blow up the ship, we should probably let uh, Liam know so that you know he doesn't lose another character. You, you do like have a well, I guess you could say party member, but uh, well. I will let Gurn espouse the benefits of his companion, but one of them would be beneficial for going underwater. He don't breathe. <laughs> well, if he's small now, too, he, he'd be a great candidate to put into the vents. To... Well, he's not small. Mm, he's just... medium, yeah. <coughs> okay. I, yeah, I altered his... The he can still be large, but uh, just for the token's sake. Walking sure. Out, always. Gotcha. Well, large does not fit in the ducks, but medium does. So, uh, I don't know if that changes your opinion. Mm. I guess we let the other guys know, too, that these ducks seem to run through the Cause, ship. Because, I mean, I'm not looking it up, but I, I'm pretty sure that, like, when you are with the construct, you've got one of those as your, you know, archetype or whatever. That it's it's like a crafting, th like a downtime thing, that you can fool with it, because that's how you upgraded it and all that, you know. Yeah. You know, you, you know. Yeah, I know. They I don't they, know they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so, kind of like we just, you know, just for simplicity's sake, to be able to use it, if you wanted to say, okay, yeah. I'll, taking time now to constrict him to medium otherwise yes just for simplicity's sake of moving around assuming he's just able to contort and change his shape as needed to move where he needs to go yeah that's what that's how i imagine it role play so what is your plan, gentlemen? My plan is to have no plan. <laughs> well, I say to Gurn, well, let's try to make our way up to the top deck. As my good buddy Charlie said once, I just thought I'd eat some acid and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we see any, like, you know, skeletons or something and I'll uh, dress you down and then walk and like storm off and then you could uh, talk to the guy butler to butler he's playing a different game at this point are you tolerating this Garrett <laughs> I'm curious how he's going to finish what do you mean <laughs> what are you dressing me down for and what am I supposed to ask well I just pretend like you're my my you know Pirate yeah, man. I'm with you there. Yeah, and then you can get you could get like commiserate with the the, the the staff, so there'll be more like they'll, they'll oh like okay, more. and maybe you can get some information on you know re restricted parts of the ship and just try to get an idea of where these fucking bombs might be hidden. Okay. So like right now we have no fucking clue. Well, we're not moving people. either. <clears throat> you mean the ship isn't moving? No, us. We've seen a total of two rooms and three hallways. Yeah. Well, well it's you and me. Well, unless we all want to go as a group, either that works too. But oh. may as well go and explore. Yeah. Um. Well. Yeah. Let's go up the floor and check it out. You guys want to split up or go as a group? I think group makes it a little more easier. I think we go a little faster with if we're all a group. Probably. Fair enough. All right, so you just gonna go exploring around? You're passing all these cabins. You're passing seem to be. Uh, whoop! I didn't mean to open that one. Uh, seem to be just rather normal. Uh, the same as yours. Doors seem to be locked. Uh, this door that you're passing right here has got a sign on it that says kitchen. 
and you can hear the bustling sounds of folks busily at work. Uh, the door ahead of you is labeled uh, with a rather ornate sign that indicates it is the dining room. The dining hall, I should say. As you open it and walk through, you see a huge buffet table in the center. A couple smaller ones all around. Um, this is where the main dining hall is. Most people choose to eat above and like the, on the entertainment decks. But this one here, you have a nice view of the uh, churning of the paddle wheel as it rushes through the river. Uh, on either end of this room are staircases going up. I start grabbing a plate and filling it with food. Alright. It is freely available to all passengers, so, I mean, you, you are able to do that. What are you, what are you grabbing? What's on your plate? All protein. Um... Prime rib, um, beef, all the meat, like probably a turkey leg, like just meat. And if, do I see any alcohol here too? Oh yeah, there's alcohol, sure. Yep, I grab a mug of it and I just sit down and start eating. All right. So that's going to take you a little bit of time. Uh, but you, I mean, you go into town. Nice. Well, I casually grab a glass of wine and start walking up the stairs to the fancy people. Uh, well, there's uh, actually nobody in here at the moment. They seem to be, like, just getting ready for dinner. It's, like, just before dinner time. So, it's... You guys are getting it before anybody gets in. Guys, this stuff's so hot. Come get it. I just shake my head. I'm like, Christ's sakes, Vimgard, you either think with your dick or your stomach. I'm going to walk <laughs> up the stairs. Start slowly coming back. I mean, following. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. Carrying gonna your leave. Oh, I have a sausage right in my hand. <laughs> sure you do. You yeah, usually do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, are you all proceeding up the stairs then together after Vimgard stuffs his face? Yep. Yep. All right. Let's see. Let me get this place suitable for you here. Here we go. Ooh. Let's see who else. For some reason, they I don't know. They don't have all the folks on this scene, right? Hold on, I'm having to move some folks around. Give me a moment. So let me see, make sure who has it. Uh, all right, so 
Are you all, which staircase are you going up? North the one. top one. The northern North, one? Yeah. Alright, so... You all pop out, and to your surprise... And this is another one, you'll have to give me the... Benefit of the theater of the mind here. Uh, Duke. Duke. Uh, Duke. Uh, so, as you all pop up on this deck, let me bring you here. There is quite a bit of commotion, and again, give me the theater of the mind, if you will, that this place is full. You recognize in front of you, though, these four characters, the ruffians that you noticed before. Uh, they seem to be here for the gambling on the ship. As they are all, you know, nearby these gambling tables. Uh, however, just as you pop up, you hear a, a voice cry out above the others, grabbing everyone's attention. And everyone seems to, for a moment, kind of turn and pay attention. And this lady here begins to speak, telling you all greetings, esteemed guests. Bro, I will throw you off the ship. Calm Bro. down. Greetings, esteemed guests. Uh, she tells you that she is Captain Elford, and it's her pleasure to welcome you all aboard the Gear Smoke. And she kind of looks around, nodding. She tells you, as some of you know, we're able to sail on this luxury, luxurious vessel thanks to the support and oversight of the Gear Smoke's owner, Master Ebrium. And she turns and gestures to the dark-haired human that's standing uh, just behind her. Uh, and you notice immediately, and from the name you recognize, this is indeed the uh, wizard of Gab that you have been chasing after. Uh, our host has generously provided us with yet another gift today, which he's asked me to unveil now. Without further ado, release the elephant. And let's see here. Uh, Argo. Hold on. This thing is not out. Well, so in this space, this, the little macros aren't working in the new version. But there's an elephant right here. Let's see. Yeah, there it goes. It made the noise. Why's the door not opening? Oh. Lame. I need to like create this again and reinstall it and see if these macros work. Maybe it's because I made this in the old version. But yeah, see, I got this whole thing of buttons. I'll show you guys. In Discord. But yeah. Alright, so. Let's see here. If I can grab its picture. And just put it in. Give me a second. I'm going to search to see if I can find it. The picture. The actual file for it. So. Uh, she unveils these crank, it cranks and, uh, you hear the mechanical groan of cranks as the floor opens up here. And lifting up from it is this, uh, unbelievably looking crafted glass elephant. The inner workings of which have all kinds of mechanical things that, you know, are just <laughs> intricately... Uh, laid out there uh, As this thing is sitting there. What do you all would you all like to do anything? observing wise Yes, and as you heard but didn't see this thing is you know the gears inside of it cause it to move its trunk and make a loud trumpeting noise which again is amazing because it's 
It's made of glass, seemingly. So it's a, like, glass clockwork construction. So see. everyone's just kind of seated around here, casually look, looking at it. Oh, yeah, looking at this thing, because it's like, you know, I mean, it's like an amazing thing here. Yeah, so, so. if I approach it, that's... Is that totally oh, no, that wouldn't be totally... Uh, right, I'll step up and admire. Oh, crazy. I'm trying to see I if I can just get the picture. Join you. Well, this is what I'm gonna do. Hold on. Let's see if I can find the macro here that's supposed to do it. Macro. I wonder if it's, hold on, give me a second here, because I wonder if this was the problem before. EF2. I bet you that's it. Alright, this might make you all, well, I think it's definitely going to make you all reload, but hold on a second. I think I never re-enabled the actual, like, base, like, base macro for the actual outlaws thing. Hold on. What a dummy. Oh shit. Okay. Now I just closed the whole thing by accident. Give me a second. <laughs> go back now it's it's live again okay i'm trying to close the thing that popped up from me activating the thing all right this is gonna work now i think Still didn't work. What a piece of shit. Dude, it's not me. It's their shit. Because I've got this whole row of buttons where I'm supposed to be able to open this hatch. You know, I've been able to do it in other maps. It's just pissing me off because, like, that's the whole thing right now is this. So anyway, uh, let's see. All right, so, yes, you move towards this thing, and I imagine you want to look at it. Yep, I'm going to examine it to see if I can see the bomb that is most definitely in there. Uh, let's see. Go ahead. I'm going to take a screenshot of what I can see, and I'll put a token here. You guys can see stuff? Uh, so, people kind of go back to gambling around this room, impressed momentarily with this thing. Let's see.
There we go. <laughs> so, look, we're getting somewhere. So, there it is with its sheet over it. Oh, uh, why can't I get the sheet off of it? Great school! Great school! I can show you the position of it. And you, I don't know why the none of the macros seem to work. Basic. Maybe I can switch its picture here. Oh. There we go. Boom. Unveiled. So, this thing, which definitely does not have a bomb in it. Thank you. I've been here all week. Uh, you, <laughs> you uh, observed it and looked closely. Uh, as you are doing so, uh, you notice that this fellow uh, retires back into the suites, as it will, back here. Uh, the That's cap, okay. the captain in tow, sucking up as they go on back into this, you know, the bevy of sweets back here uh, that you can tell look fancy. Uh, this little thing, as you are searching through it here, you notice, uh, of course, these gears look way too intricate to be only for blowing a, a trumpeting sound uh, as you look very closely uh, you begin to notice that indeed you can almost make out the telltale sign of fuses and cylinders but you don't quite confirm that there's pyronite in there but you do see fuses and cylinders And as you, as you are looking at this thing, it kind of almost scares you. It jerks and moves and does another display, moving like some of its feet in a certain way. It seems to be, you know, not just a, a sculpture, but a like a living, moving thing here. It's on a routine, blowing its horn and, you know, moving and preening about. Uh, other than that, like I say, everyone around you seems to have uh, kind of gone around back to gambling and doing their thing. Uh, so this thing arose from the floor like a musician on stage? Yes. Was there... Did, did we see how it was operated? Uh, you did not. There doesn't seem to be a like panel that operates it that you see uh, in this room, anyway. Uh, this does seem to be, though, like the main entertainment area. There's a, like, say, Theater of the Mind with me, if you will. A large dance area over here. And then, of course, the gambling tables all around. This seems to be, like, the main entertainment area. Uh, 
uh, and this area over here that where you saw these two retire to uh, they actually went up some stairs so these stairs here go up to the next deck uh, but this suite of rooms in here is accessed by this door you could tell is it has like VIP signs on it it's very fancifully done uh, doesn't seem to be an area you could just waltz into however you can see uh, the stairs that they walked up just go up to the uh, top deck of the boat and you you can kind of see it this this uh it's like a half deck right I don't know if you've been on like a cruise boat or something but this it kind of continues up those stairs so they've walked up into a uh, into that area and then further up where you just can't see where they've gone but presumably to some more VIP-ish area so essentially you guys are on the mid deck and that those these stairs here go up to the top deck Is there an access to this elephant, like a panel door on its belly or something? Uh, you you notice, it. you notice right behind his tail. No, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's 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 actually that's one of I guess the impressive features of it. It seems to be completely seamless. Uh, obviously it's hollow inside so whether it was like the glass was blown around this thing or some kind of magic uh, was on cue yeah and it is surprisingly lifelike I mean it definitely in your new uh, newly acquired knowledge as a clockwork uh, constructionist it is something entirely you know this is this is not within your skill yet uh, unless you found a fresh elephant corpse perhaps all right so <clears throat> what's our, what's our plan here now we're just gonna take note of this can't really do anything about it now, right? No. Uh, we can... So you said it's surrounded by glass? It is made of glass. It is a glass sculpture. Yes. But it's hollow. Great. Hollow and all the mechanisms that are... So it's a glass sculpture, but it's like moving. Which is, obviously, seems to be some kind of imbued or otherwise you know very sophisticated technically glass because it is moving and very lifelike and people are obviously very excited by it they keep you know cheering it as it is doing its little displays and such um so i would gather that if it was to be tampered with it would defend itself uh likely or more per, more apt is like the I mean this room again if you'll theater of the mind with me is filled with patrons as the sound indicates if you can hear the ambient sound it's a bunch of people uh, talking like a big crowd so this room is just full of folks then you know some are enamored you know gleefully watching this thing uh, so if you yeah if, if you stepped up to it and started you know took your diamond ring out right cut a hole yeah in it. i wouldn't wouldn't be doing it now my right uh, ideally would be to lower it back down and uh, get at it away from all these witnesses it would be nice mm. to take note and see if we could somehow it could be used as a distraction in the future let it loose If it's controlled, though, it's not going to do anything untoward its master emotions. 
Fair enough. I have no appropriate skills to figure out anything about that fucking thing. Uh, you could uh, mingle about the room and speak to all these folks around. These are definitely, you know, some of them are the rich, tawdy, haughty, tawdy folks, but, you know, they're obviously of a persuasion that they enjoy gambling and vices and are entertained by a glass elephant. So that is something you could do. Vemgard, there's finally a challenge for your green monster right there. Ah. <laughs> uh, just as you are milling about, coming up with a plan, you do notice that uh, a patrol of shield marshals seems to come blustering through this passage. Uh, let's see. Where are you? Oh, it is. Uh, they come out of this door here and they just kind of file through and they begin to you know just kind of patrol this room in a routine kind of fashion and they stop for a moment and seem to be taking in the view here well, I think I'd like to take a seat at one of the I roll the uh, high roller gambling tables and start chatting up with some rich people. All right. I'll give a minus one diplomacy. Probably shouldn't be me, but whatever. Uh, well, you sit down and you notice that they are playing uh, Golem Gamblers, which we all know is the most popular card game in the inner sea region. No need to even discuss that. Uh, uh, as you sit down to play, you of course have several options ranging from just playing straight up or trying to cheat, trying to, you know, win by deception and deceit and thievery. I'll just play straight up at the start. I'm more interested in information than I am with taking rich people's money tonight. All right. Tap uh -huh. on your shoulder and uh, give you a silver tongue mutagen. All right. You hand him that sneakily. Are you going to try to drink that? Yeah, you bet. I'll drink it right off the bat. Right in front of these people. Well, I'll stealthily... Just uh, pro provide a drink from his... loyal servant. I'll just clap my hands together and act like I'm... Getting him to come over and give me one of my personal stock drinks. Because that's what every bar loves, is people that bring their own. <laughs> All right. All right, Cheech and Chong. You guys... Uh, go over and you, you do all that there. Uh, you have a way to hand that to him or it doesn't let you in this one. You've got to... All right, I'll drop it on him. Here it is. Silver tongue, you say? Where is he? There he is. All right, there it is. So you chug that down, you sit down, and as you begin to do something, Vimgard, what are you going to do? I am uh, going over to the dance floor. Okay. And you start uh, dancing? Yep. Start dancing with the ladies there. Uh, Let's see performance check. Oh shit, the one that I don't have. Alright. Oh. 
all right? You dance decently enough to fit in with these folks. You kind of pick up on their moves, and they're not impressed, but they're not appalled. Uh, I start dancing, start talking to the ladies, uh, talking about uh, seeing uh, what the hot what the high class area looks like up there and well we can look at that later trying to give them give them a wink a little diplomacy you asking them yeah if if they are how like what's your what's your angle i'm not quite sure uh, i'm trying to see if they're high rollers and yeah i'm going to try and pull off that I'm high roller okay oh. so just perception then to like see if they've got you know if they're fancifully enough dressed right yeah Okay, so blind. Yeah, sorry. Poke your eyes out. Ow. Uh, so you look these ladies over, and while well, they are finally attired. They don't seem to be the finest of the fine. I mean, they're out here sweating and dancing. They might even be someone's children. Uh, I, I start slowly walking away, realizing that. And more towards the guards by the, over here and kind of keeping an eye out. Okay. Uh, Drez, you over by the stairs are thinking what? I'm going to go up these stairs. Okay. So you will boop -a -da boo actually be going here. Oh, you here? One second. Uh, actually, we can do it like this. So, one moment, folks. As you walk up these stairs, you look kind of here. Thank you for here. And you are here. And let me try this. It's all precise. Uh, so yeah. Oh, let me see. Let me get back to my thing. Unveil him again. <laughs> Alrighty. So yeah, there we go. Uh, we lost the chatter of folks, but. Uh, so, you, as you walk up here, my friend, uh, you see that this is just the upper entertainment deck. The two wide staircases lead to this, uh, I don't know why you can't see it like you should. I guess they just can't see it. You can see it. Yeah, yeah, you can see it. Okay. So, yeah, uh, you just see more gambling tables up here. Again, bear with me that there's many folks going around partying. Um, you notice that uh, the door leading over into here seems to have a sign hung up on it. You can't quite make out what it says at the moment. Uh, but it is all just curtained off. All of the, there's like windows all up and down here. You can see have curtains drawn in them. Uh, and yeah.
would you what else will you do as you come up to this deck do you want to mingle with any of these folks or get closer to the store i'm gonna kind of meander over here to the center of the area and take a glance at the door see if i can read the signs in here you in fact can uh you can see from there that it prominently says uh private party closed All right, I make note of that. I'm assuming this over here is railing looking down on the lower part of the deck. Yes, it is precisely. I'm just going to go over here to the railing and look out over the rest of everything. All right, you'd stand there serenely. The wind passes over you. Uh, you feel worn with the man awaste. Uh, but just as you are receiving this feeling, you also suddenly feel a slight like crackle in the air. You're not quite sure, but you you feel a strong like surge of magical energy. You're not quite sure what it is precisely. You know, you're in the man away, so that's not totally unheard of. However, this seems to you, after all you've experienced, uh, particularly strong, and uh, you are you are slightly concerned by this feeling. I do, do, do. Is it a feeling that feels like it's coming from a certain direction, or is it just kind of all around? It feels like it is emanating from the ship, all around you. All right, so uh, back to you guys over here drinking the potion as you go to sit down. Uh, you, how much are you throwing in? This table is uh, up to a hundred gold piece of wager. How many hands do you play, and how much do you wager? I'll sit down with two hundred gold pieces. You know, I'll wager fifty on the first one. Okay, well, just how many hands do you play before you do something else or you start, like, talking to them? Yeah, I'll play one hand and then I'll start talking at the t to the table after that. I'd like to just ask everybody, oh, is this their first time on the ship? See if we have any kind of repeat customers here that might be able to give me some information about this thing. Uh, so... On your uh, first hand there, you turn over your gold, essentially, to them, having not been uh, warmed up enough in this game to really come at them, but that wasn't your goal. You gladly sacrifice the gold to enter into conversation, and indeed, the one sitting right across the table from you uh, tells you that this is his first time on this boat and he's enjoying it so far what about you he asks i say so far it's pretty amazing that elephant's pretty neat it just seems like it's a very fancy ship that fits my stature are there any uh have you found any areas so far that are off limits because so far that seems to be a free-for-all I, I love it here he finds the tone of your question kind of odd. Can you roll a diplomacy check? All right. Uh, can you do that blind? Perfect. And I'm not calling circumstance one. bonus for that. Uh, it was on there. It was okay. Is it just one? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. and crit failures are only failures instead. Just mediated, yeah. Gotcha. All right, so uh, 
he he finds that question rather odd and he he kind of changes the subject back to the elephant and talks about the craftsmanship of it and how he finds it very impressive almost on cue it uh, cuts him off with a trumpeting demonstration everyone cheers and ga uh, gaggles at it uh, for a moment uh, and they are ready to deal up another hand. Are you going to go in with another, uh, bet? Yeah, let's go with another 50. Okay. So you come in with another, uh, they all begin just chatting about their various cabins and how they like or don't the, uh, arrangements they've all Procured. Uh, this time, you almost immediately uh, bow out, and you you're just making charitable donations to them at this point. Uh, they they begin to wonder if you even know how to play this game. Well, as they're talking about accommodations, I say, "Oh, they've been great, but." Have any of you been to that cigar lounge? It just stinks in there. Oh, the person to your left here uh, just turns and you've like hit a switch. They're like, oh, I know it. I try to enjoy and they name some crazy vintage of a cigar from some far off portion of the inner sea region that you recognize as being very high polluting. And they tell you they couldn't even enjoy it. They had to take it back to their room. And now their room is all stunk up with cigar smoke. Uh, and they tell you they hope the crew finds the source of it. They heard that they were down in the lower decks, you know, searching for the source of it. Okay. Good to know. And then for the third hand, I'll put down my remaining 100 gold and see what happens. Uh, you surprise all of them and you clear the table and take away all their gold. So you have been down 200 and up 400. All right. And on that note, I say, well, I'm going to leave on a high note. Thanks for the money. And then just grab my cash and walk away. Uh, Gern, you have witnessed all of this. What will you do in response? Uh, step to attention with his coat on my arm, ready to follow. All right, you keep up your subterfuge then of man, hobgoblin, servant. Um, I don't see the token for buddy anymore. Oh, I don't think I dropped him down on this map yet. You want to control him? Uh, I was just curious. I was going to have him dance with them, Kurt. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's the wrong one. Hold on. Let me delete him. Die. All right. Well, would you describe which of its rotting constructed opinion appendages with it uses to dance with him? <laughs> As lower right goes on the hollow of them guards back. The other one clasps his left arm up high and they do the tango. I let him take lead. Uh, the smell is horrible. Rotting flesh and gear oil mixed together. Um, somehow you oh. find it pleasing. Can I do a crafting check to see if that's the exact same smell as the cigar room? Yes. Okay, I make sure it's blind. Was he the stink? 
No, but I... The smell of rotting flesh is similar, but it is not the exact same smell. No. So uh, I feel like we may have a undead army down below. <laughs> or some sort of creature down below. Realizing that I flapped Reese's ass to go dance with other girl, those other girls and start going over towards Gurn and Saren and tell them my discovery. Uh, this thing did not let go of you. Because Gurn oh, did shit. not command it to. <laughs> oh, shit. And none of us believe you. So, uh, Gurn, will you leave it grabbed hold of Vimgarn? He grips and pulls him in tighter. And it'll do a dip. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so you are restrained by this thing as you dance in the pale moonlight. No, it's still afternoon. Uh, a loud trumpeting noise breaks the romance as this glass elephant goes through its routines. Uh, up on the high deck, you have witnessed all of this, Drez. What will you do in response? Uh, I am going to pretend like I don't know any of these people. Go back down the stairs here. And back down to the deck below. <laughs> All right. Before Vimgard and this Frankenstein's monster start fucking on the dance floor. <laughs> Hold on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just say that with no warning. <laughs> okay. Uh, I gave you ideas, didn't I? No. You He's did. busy over here scribbling you notes. Did. His, yes, I hate to see his notepad. Uh, you know you can't do that. All right. So, can you see yourself down below here? Uh, yeah, I can. All right, so you all see uh, Mr. Killshot disappear below deck. Uh, that's funny. How come y'all can still see him right there? But he's not there. All right, well, he is gone below deck. Oh, because I'm on the wrong way. Uh, he has gone, there we go, below deck. And what will you do now that you are here? Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to pass through the dining room. Mm -hmm. All the way back down this hall. This was the cigar lounge, correct? It is. All right, we never looked down here. You did not. So I'm going to go down this hallway. It is a hall of cabins. They all have average locks, it looks like, from your expertise, uh, which, of course, require the four successful, I think it's 20-some, uh, checks to get them open. There does not seem to be anyone, you know, milling about in the hallways, and from the amount of people you just saw up in the entertainment area, and of course, the private party that you observed, you would, you would hazard a guess that most people are, you know, pretty well engaged. All right. Since there doesn't seem to be anybody around to see me, I'm going to move stealthily and go to this door right here. And I would like to attempt to pick the lock. All right. Uh, let's see. I think I can give you a little thing <clears throat> like before. See that? Yep. Uh, it's a twenty-five. So 
So one uh, one tumbler is tumbled. Two tumblers are tumbled on that one, so three total. And the last one comes clean open. Uh, the door's unlocked. Do you open it? Yeah. All right. Uh, it comes open, and there's a naked lady. No. Uh, it, <laughs> there is, luckily, no one in here, as you guessed. I'm going to go in and I'll shut the door behind me. All right. And I would like to look for valuables. Uh, you discover uh, 23 gold pieces tucked away. And under the mattress here, seemingly someone's winnings, that early winnings that they stuffed away, uh, you put it in your pocket. Alright. Uh, and then I'm just gonna go back out into the hallway and continue trying to take care of the business at hand. Alrighty. Still moving about stealthily, too. And I can see that door leads back into the dining hall. It does indeed. So I'm just going to go back over to here. Down this long-ass hallway. As you pass by one of the rooms, you hear... What they do in the privacy of their own room is their own business, unless they've got valuables, and it's my business. You hear, unless... my diamonds! <laughs> do a perception check to see which door that came from. All of them. This is, they're all rich now. <laughs> Right, I'm going to head back down here to the stairwell to the lower deck. Alrighty. And are you poised to go down those stairs? Yeah. Alrighty. You step down them, and as you travel down them, up on the other decks, your companions are doing what? So I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave you there, but I'll pull you back up here to see what they're doing. So back up here, gripped by this creature. Uh oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Sorry, I did it again. Hold on, dress. Take you with me. Here we go. Uh gripped by this creature. Well, what you gonna do, buddy? You gonna try to get away from it, or do you defer to these guys over here? Them guard. Uh, I'm going to try to ungrapple myself gracefully from this from Reese. Okay, let me see your athletics, or do you want to try to strike it? Oh, athletic. Okay. Oops. Oh. Uh, you struggle and are still held tightly. That's good. You guys cause a major diversion up there. It'll make it easier for me to sneak around down here. All right. Well, uh, since I'm still grabbed, uh, I guess we're still dancing. You are, and people are definitely gawking at you. Do uh, you want to make another attempt, or do you just defer to them? Perhaps uh, God will command it to let go of you. You know what? With the smirk, I'll give a little chin nod and tell them to ease up. Oh, I was just going to do a performance check. Okay, if you want to ham it up. Untrained, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Um, yes, I am. Bad? Oh, yes. Performance bad? So, you, you try to ham it up with this thing, but... I mean, it's not, it's mindless, right? It's a construct, so it doesn't, yeah. like, really respond. And you just end up looking kind of silly. All right. Everyone laughs, though. Well, all eyes are on me. Uh, Saren and Gurn, what will you do here in the twilight moments of our session? Having won some gambling earnings and made your party member a buffoon, respectively. <laughs> well, I kind of whispered to Gern, should we go down a level and see if we can access the vents? Whatever you say, my liege. <laughs> Alright, well, follow me. All right, so you all proceed downward. Do you, you command your construct to let go of him and come with you? Yeah. I'm just getting dragged by you. <laughs> by him. Oh, no. He, <clears throat> over your shoulder. Let's. Oh, you want him to keep hold of him and do that? No, no. <laughs> do it. I mean, I don't think he's large, so, like, Bimgar can't really resist, you know? kind of a who gonna stop me situation <laughs> all right so uh you all proceed downward and indeed emerge once more in the uh dining hall do 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 uh do 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 I mentioned to Gurren as we're walking down there too that did you see in the kitchen there there's also a flight of stairs going down? I didn't notice that, yeah. Uh well, with that observation, my proposal is you guys wanna chill it right there. You come back with Liam waking up from his nap and then you can act on that. Yeah, I think that's yeah. good. Fair enough. GG, good sesh. Yeah, it's great game. Good times. <laughs>